Welcome to Unexpected History. This episode of Did You Know will cover the so called Buffalo Soldiers, Sir Isaac Newton as a law enforcement agent, and the ship that hit an iceberg in the North Atlantic and sank. It's not the ship you're thinking about right now, but it is the Isaac Newton you thought you knew. Number 1. The Buffalo Soldiers. The original Buffalo Soldiers, from the 10th Cavalry Regiment, were what was then known as the Colored Cavalry. They were given that nickname by the American Indian tribes that fought in the Indian Wars, a series of military engagements from the early 17th century to the early 20th century between European, American, and Canadian governments and various American Indian tribes. Many all-black units were created and fought for the Union Army during the American Civil War, but the Buffalo Soldiers were created by Congress as the first peacetime all-black regiments in the regular United States Army. The units were not desegregated until 1948, when President Truman signed Executive Order 9981, which integrated the entire U.S. military, although it took a few years to actually make that a reality, as at least a few of the units were active, presumably still all black, until 1951, although I can't find any definitive information about that. All black regiments saw combat in every military action in which the U.S. military was involved, from their creation until their integration, occasionally with black commanding officers, including the first black graduate of West Point, Henry O. Flipper, but usually with white commanders. They were among the first U.S. units to fight in France, albeit under French command. Mostly known as fierce and willing fighters, while facing severe prejudice nearly everywhere they were stationed, 23 Buffalo Soldiers were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor during the Indian Wars. Although I am unaware exactly how many of the recipients were black, from 1866 to 1891, the Buffalo Soldiers represented 12% of the infantry, and fully 20% of the cavalry, yet only accounted for 4% of the Medals of Honor awarded. You can draw your own conclusions from those numbers. Some other notable achievements of the original Buffalo Soldiers were. Beginning in 1899, certain units of the Buffalo Soldiers were among the first park rangers in Yosemite, Sequoia, and Kings Canyon National Parks. In 1903, they built the first trail to the summit of Mount Whitney, as well as the first road to the most well-known grove in Sequoia National Park, the Giant Forest. In 1904, they built an arboretum on the south fork of the Merced River in the southern end of Yosemite, which is commonly considered the first museum in any national park, labeling the plants exhibited therein, in both English and Latin. Little of the arboretum remains today, but its legacy, and the legacy of those who built, staffed, and maintained it, lives on to this day. Perhaps the most recognized legacy of the Buffalo Soldiers' time as park rangers, before the National Park Service even existed, is the ranger hat, known colloquially as the Smokey the Bear hat. The last surviving Buffalo Soldier, Mark Matthews, died in 2005, at the age of 111, and is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Number 2. Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton, the father of modern physics, wasn't just a mathematician. He was also a physicist, theologian, alchemist, economist, philosopher, and astronomer. Perhaps strangest of all, however, was his foray into law enforcement. In the 1690s, he was made a warden of the Royal Mint. As a warden, Newton often went undercover in bars, taverns, and other seedy establishments to find counterfeit coinage. The production of counterfeit coins was a crime punishable by death. It was estimated by Newton that fully 20% of the coins collected during the Great Recoinage of 1696 was counterfeit. The Great Recoinage was King William III's attempt to replace the hammered silver coins that were in circulation, most of which were clipped or otherwise defaced, making them worth less than what their value was supposed to be. Although the British had strict rules about the separation of powers in government, Newton had himself made a justice of the peace in London and the surrounding counties, meaning that not only did he investigate and arrest counterfeiters, he also prosecuted, judged, and sentenced them. Convictions were difficult to achieve under British law, but Newton accepted the challenge with aplomb, successfully prosecuting 28 counterfeiters. The position of warden, then master, 
was meant to be a sinecure for Newton, with little to no responsibilities. Even so, he took it seriously, holding the master title for the last 30 years of his life. Number 3. The Titan, not the Titanic. In 1898, a novella was published, written by Morgan Robertson. The Wreck of the Titan, or Futility, is the story of the sinking of an ocean liner in the North Atlantic after hitting an iceberg. The name of the fictional ship was the Titan. The story is most famous for its eerie similarities to the real-world Titanic disaster that occurred 14 years later. Beyond the strangeness of nearly identical names, both the Titan and Titanic sank in the northern Atlantic Ocean. Both ships hit icebergs. In April, neither ship had adequate lifeboats, resulting in many passengers unnecessarily dying. In addition to those similarities, both the fictional Titan and the real Titanic were strangely close in overall length. 800 feet for the Titan, 882 feet 9 inches for Titanic. They both sailed at roughly the same speeds, and had nearly identical life-saving equipment on board. Keep in mind that The Wreck of the Titan was written 14 years before the Titanic left Southampton on her maiden voyage. When the novella was republished in 1912, presumably due to the similarities, and maybe to capitalize on the disaster, people began claiming Robertson was gifted with precognition and clairvoyance, a claim he vehemently denied. Most scholars tend to believe Robertson's knowledge of shipbuilding, and the maritime trends of the time, account for the similarities. Still, those similarities are definitely eerie. Thank you for watching Unexpected History. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. If you want to help support what we do, you can visit our Patreon page for membership information. If a monthly membership isn't your thing, you can make a one-time donation through our Buy Me A Coffee page for as little as $3. Links will be in the description below.